Hello and welcome to Views from the Market, Mid-Market Private Equity and M&A in Canada. My name is Mario Negro and I'm a partner in the Private Equity and M&A Group at Stegman Alley. For today's podcast, I'd like to welcome our special guest, Matthew Hooper. Matthew is the CEO of Home Turf Lawn Care. Matthew, thank you for joining us. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to call you Matt because I know you as Matt, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> Matt, thank you for joining us and welcome. That's perfectly fine. Thanks for having me on, Mario. Now, we always start by asking our guests to tell us a little bit about themselves. So I'd love to start by you telling us a little bit about yourself, your history, and then talk a bit about, I mean, there's a great story that we're going to be talking about today, which is just the whole evolution of home turfs. So maybe we start a bit with Hemlock and then go over to home turf if that works for you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm born in BC. I came out to Ontario originally in 2009 to do my MBA at Queen's School of Business. After I graduated from my MBA, I spent a couple of years living and working in Europe and then settled back in Toronto and spent most of the early parts of my career working in management consulting, working for a few different boutique firms that specialized in operations consulting. And you got to a point in my career where I sort of had a decision to make in terms of the path that I wanted to take. And I was fortunate that I had connected with some folks who had run search funds and had acquired businesses in the lower middle market. And that exposure kind of created a bit of an itch in me. And I learned more about the model. And it was at a time when I was you know, looking to make a change, looking to acquire a business of my own that I would operate. And so I got connected to folks like yourself and other searchers in the market and just sort of dove deeper and eventually decided to make that transition and left the consulting firm I was at and launched my fund, Hemlock Capital Partners, and started on that journey. When you set up Hemlock, I remember you were out there looking for everything and anything, and you ended up in a home services business that was at the time still probably a space not as attractive as it is now, but now super attractive. Tell us a little bit about how you came to find home turf and what was your thinking behind the opportunity? Yeah, I certainly didn't expect when I started on the journey to acquire a business in the lawn care space. I don't even think home services in general was a big part of my original thesis. But I think I came into the process, you know, knowing what I didn't know, knowing that there was going to be a process of discovery and and there were likely going to be industries or business models that, that I might learn about that weren't on my radar. And this is a great example of one of those. You know, I had, I spent most of about two years searching and kind of looking down a number of different niche industries, some of which have been exhausted by the search community, some of which maybe haven't been. And, you know, eventually it was fortunate to come across home turf, connect with the business owner. And it was at a time when the world had a lot of uncertainty. We ended up closing on the acquisition of home turf in August of 2020 which was obviously in the early stages of the pandemic, but we began sort of negotiating what would be the acquisition strategy and model in the fall of 2019. And we're able to kind of build through the spring of 2020 and the onset of the pandemic, mostly because I was able to establish, I think, a really strong relationship with the owner. And we were able to find a really strong alignment and goals and objectives between what I was looking for in a business and a role and what he was looking for as he looked to transition out of his company. And Matt, just in terms of how you found home turf, it was proprietary, right? You were just out there working the streets, whatever the right way to say is. Is that literally an outreach? Yeah, absolutely. I think I found home turf through some list. I think it was its inclusion in the growth 500 list at one point. So that was kind of the original you know, model. We had been chasing down leads from that growth 500 list that met certain criteria. But that one in particular stood out to me as I started to research that industry a little bit more. And so I probably spent a little bit more time in my outreach materials and my strategy and philosophy when it came to approaching the owner in that particular industry, because it just seemed like it was a really good fit for the search fund model. And, you know, one of the things that I, uh, and obviously we've been working together for years, I saw when you found it, saw when you closed it, been through this journey. One of the things that was great about home turf. And one of the great success stories is your relationship with the owner, because not only did you buy it from the owner, but you on on to become the CEO. He stayed on like you really had a, a, you know, a partnership in the true sense of the word, because he didn't just sell and leave. He was invested in you, invested in the business even after close. 
Absolutely. And I think that was really important that we can talk about a lot of the things that we liked about the business, but these are some of the things that often get overlooked in deals, but I think they're incredibly important is, you know, that relationship with the outgoing owner, how that role and dynamic is going to play out in the short term and long term. We were very fortunate, you know, the business, the prior owner was a young person. And for some investors that might cause some apprehension, why is a young person looking to sort of divest their interest in a company? But he really believed in the business, believed in its long-term potential. But he'd been, it had been in their family for the better part of 30 years. And it, I think he had just sort of ran a little bit tired of the operating role in the business and wanted to make a change. And it was really a good fit in that he wanted to maintain an interest in the business, wanted to be helpful through the transition but the business needed a new voice and a new person in charge. And I was happy to take on that role. And we continue to have a great relationship. And he was tremendous help for me in the early stages as I took on a role in a new business and a completely new industry for me. And when you took on the role of CEO of Home Turf, I know, you know and I remember us having these conversations, your focus was organic growth, especially during the, I mean, you were trying to grow a business during the pandemic when no one was going outside, everybody was in their home. So maybe we'd love to hear a bit about your strategy and obviously a successful strategy, which we'll get to in a second when we talk about the sale, but tell us a little about the growth strategy because it was very organic. You were a trench warfare man, my, my friend. You worked every client by client, you grew this business, so. We did. One of the things that I loved about the business was that it did kind of meet a lot of the criteria for what we typically look for in search fund investments. You know, the business had a very strong, consistent track record of growth. Very few years with kind of exceptional growth, but very few years with weak growth or sort of neutral growth. Very low customer concentration because you have a significant number of residential customers throughout Southern Ontario and in Alberta, low capital you know, investment requirements, strong margins, just a fundamentally very good business. And we believe there were avenues to grow the business, both in terms of kind of just the average number or the number of customers that it was servicing and the average revenue per customer, looking at service line expansion. And we were fortunate in that most of what we sort of envisioned or built into our thesis came true over a fairly short period. Now, we're also fortunate in the timing of the investment in that some of the folks in our investment team believe that the pandemic would actually create some opportunity that the business maybe hadn't seen in the past as homeowners were spending more time at home and we're going to likely have to invest more in their home spaces, outdoor spaces, and would have more disposable income available to them. Other investors saw more of the risk. And so I think it just depended on each person's unique perspective. I believe that there was some attractive tailwinds that would come from the pandemic. And you know, we saw that in the first year in particular, the business grew two, three X more than it ever had in a single year, which was a combination of good fortune and good strategy. And we rode that wave and were able to build off that in year two. And that's created opportunities that we always assumed would be there, but probably were there a little bit sooner than we had initially thought. Matt, you did a great job of utilizing the web and other resources to really help grow this business. And the strategy, yeah, as you point out, worked really well. I mean, you had a good, solid growth year over year. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up. I mean, you weren't looking for a sales process. You were, you had a plot in a way, doing well. Business was growing, but you had an, I mean, obviously an opportunity came your way. Tell us a little bit about the, the opportunity and the sale. And obviously we're going to talk a bit about the exciting stuff after the sale. Absolutely. I mean, the lawn care services industry is a very fragmented industry. It's one of the things that attracted us to it in the first place. You do have some large multi-regional players, largely franchisees that tend to dominate the space. And in the U.S., obviously, True Green would be one of the biggest and actually by far the biggest. But beyond the True Green and the sort of large franchisees, there weren't a lot of sort of middle market sized lawn care businesses and businesses like home turf were pretty rare. And I think that's become something that, you know, we've seen in other industries. You see it in the pest control space. You've obviously seen it in the HVAC space. Lawn care was just one that was sort of ripe for consolidation, but we just hadn't seen it yet. And over the course of our investment holding period, we started to see that happen. We started to see some large established funds begin acquiring businesses in the lawn care space. And all of a sudden there were three or four large private equity firms out of the U.S. acquiring small to mid-sized 
lawn care, regional lawn care providers with a goal of growing to become that second or third largest business in the North American market. And in seeing that, although we had had very strong success in our first 18 months into the investment, we just felt it was good to open those conversations. And as we began talking with a few different groups, it became obvious that we were a very attractive asset and a somewhat rare asset in the Canadian market. And so we weren't looking for an opportunity to sell the business, but we were certainly open to finding the right partners because we believe that the right group is going to have success in this industry and consolidate this industry. And at some point you have to decide which team you think is a good partner for you to make sure that you're on the right side as that growth happens. Matt, you were successful in selling the business. It was a great result for you and all your hard work and for your investors. It was a great story. You stayed on. You're still the CEO of Home Turf. You're still focused on growing the business. You, you know, invested also in the new owner. You're still all in. How does it feel to have gone through the sale? And do you notice any differences in your approach or where the business goes or where things are going to go with the new ownership? Or is the strategy still the same organic full speed ahead? Yeah, I think, well, it feels great now. It's always a long and challenging process. And this case was obviously no different as well. But no, I think we're very happy. We feel like we've partnered with a great team at Expare Green and backed by the support of Huron Capital Partners. Like I said, when we were evaluating kind of some of the folks who were interested, that was a really important factor was what sort of management team they had assembled, what their growth strategy looked like. Because I know for me personally, I was intended to maintain an investment in the space. And this team just clearly seemed to us the best of the ones that we spoke with. And we're very happy now with how things have worked out. I mean, it's very early days. We're less than a few months in, but so far things are working out very well. The team out of the US has been hard at work completing other acquisitions. I think they've done eight or nine since they completed their first acquisition less than a year ago. So it's been a very busy time for them and we're happy to be part of the team. And, you know, the growth strategy is gonna be largely consistent with what we've been doing the past few years. But we do now have the opportunity to likely do more deals in Canada with a financial partner who provides us more resources to be able to get those deals done. And so we're going to be looking for opportunities that are a good fit, whether they be ones that allow us to expand our geographic reach in Canada or ones that maybe allow us to expand our service model into sort of secondary markets that are well aligned with the lawn care space. Matt, you've been out there for the last few years searching, uh, running a company, continuing to run a company. So I wanted to get your perspective on the marketplace. And in some ways, you, you've you been really out there because you've been trying to grow a business during really crazy times. You know, we always ask, we have a crystal ball question. We always ask our guests, what's their perspective in terms of where they sit on the market and where things are going? You look at your space, I mean, you kind of gave us a bit of it already. You're sitting on the ground and you really are in the trenches every day trying to grow this business customer by customer. What's your sense of the market and where it's going and the opportunities and the challenges? Yeah, I think it is a very uncertain time, I would say. And I think if I had a really strong conviction of what's going to happen, I probably maybe would be sitting in a different chair. But I do think that there's going to be more opportunities for business owners looking to sell their businesses. Obviously, you know, what we have seen, what we will continue to see over the next five to 10 years is sort of an unprecedented transfer of wealth from a generation of business owners who are looking to sell and transition out of running their businesses and have built up great businesses, but are looking for the right operating partner to take those companies on and to continue to grow and invest in the people and the communities that those businesses serve. So I think there's going to be no shortage of opportunities to invest in great businesses. Obviously, interest rates are going to make that a little bit more challenging. And I think that what we're seeing now in the economy is just more of an emphasis being placed on finding great businesses. And I think the valuations will continue to support that for those great businesses. The businesses that maybe historically might have transacted, but at sort of lower valuations, I think those ones are going to have a more challenging time transacting in the current economy and the current market. But I do think that there's going to be still no shortage of opportunities for great deals. And I think for searchers who are out searching in the market today, this is a really great opportunity to find a good business and to make a good investment. I think in our space in particular, we're going to continue to see a lot of consolidation in this lawn care services space. 
home care services in general. And I think a big reason for that is these businesses tend to generate really reliable, consistent cash flow. And I think that is something that never wavers in terms of sort of someone's investment strategy and philosophy. I think we, you know, we've seen over the last few years, a bit of a change in how folks are viewing more technology focused businesses, particularly those that aren't necessarily generating those strong, repeatable cash flows. And I think this industry, the home care services industry in general, I think has become so attractive because these businesses are very consistent and there's a lot of avenues to grow them, be it organically or be it through acquisition. So I think the space has a lot of opportunity to grow. I think the long care services space specifically has a lot of opportunities to grow and we're excited for what that may hold for us and for the business in the future. Matt, I want to thank you for joining us. Your story is such a great story on so many levels. And I remember we were there together when you started this journey and it's been a hell of a hell of a ride. And I know how hard you worked to get it to where you are. And it's, these are one of the great stories in this space. So it's just great to be able to see you have such success and knowing how hard you work for it. It's a great story for others to hear. So thank you for joining us and sharing the story. My pleasure. Thank you, Mario. Always a pleasure.